Greetings, everyone. Hello from the east coast of the United States. It's a very, very hot July day, or actually early evening, and it's still hot. And I'm coming to you from Manassas, Virginia, my home. And I wanted to announce a new project or a new effort that I'm starting up. For the past year, I've been following the American presidential election pretty closely. And for a long time, it seemed like Biden and Trump both the presumptive nominees of their parties were fairly deadlocked, that they were about, each had about a 50-50 chance of winning the election. That changed last month, starting with the uh, horrendous uh, Biden performance at the first debate, followed by the reaction from the media, from analysts, from especially the party, and also donors. It looks like right now that Biden has less of a chance of winning than he did before and polls seem to back that up. His campaign hasn't collapsed, but it's taken a major hit. And so far, he doesn't seem to have been able to have salvaged that. There's still open talk about replace, about asking him to step down voluntarily or replacing him with Kamala Harris or holding what uh, Clyburn called a mini convention ahead of the uh, presidential convention that's supposed to happen next month. At any rate, it looks like the odds of Trump winning just went up. And in fact, Nate Silver called the odds at two to one. Now, between now and November, of course, is four months, and in four months, quite a lot can happen. Uh, either candidate or both could suffer medical reversals. The economy could suffer or enjoy macroeconomic change. There are a lot of opportunities for foreign policy to either make Biden look bad or make him look good, especially in Gaza and in Ukraine. And of course, there are all kinds of possibilities for natural disasters, especially climate-driven ones, that could help or degrade the chances of either candidate. That said, I think it's a good time for us to start preparing for the likelihood of a second Trump presidency. And by us, I mean anybody in the United States and of course anybody in the world. And when I say this, I'm not ahead of the curve here. NATO has already been preparing, trying to set up everything from uh, aid to Ukraine locked in so that a presumptive Trump administration couldn't turn it off, to trying to adjust their budgets to uh, impress a presumptive President Trump so he won't cut them off and so on. I think it's really incumbent on higher education to start planning this. Um, again, I'm, I'm not guaranteeing a Trump outcome, and I'm definitely not celebrating one, quite the opposite. But I think we should really, really take time to plan for the contingencies uh, for what might happen. Now, my focus is the future of higher education, and I'd like to see what I can offer higher education academics as they prepare for this eventuality. So uh, I've got four projects in mind, and I want to see what you all think of them. Uh, the first is to take my Future Trends Forum. If you don't know, it's a weekly video conference, a discussion about the future of higher education. Each session has one, two, or even three guests. I serve as a moderator, and we have dozens or hundreds of people in the audience. No PowerPoint presentations, just free-flowing, organic conversation. Uh, it's a special place, and uh, there are great people in the audience. I really, really enjoy it. We've covered a wide range of topics in our nearly nine years of operation, including politics, and it might be that we can do a couple of different things here. Uh, we could host some academics who are experts on presidential elections. They might be political scientists, American historians, professors of government, and so on. And we can have a discussion about the likelihood of how this plays out and all the different mechanisms, and especially what this might mean for colleges and universities. Uh, second, we could do a tabletop simulation. That is, all, everybody who participates in the session plays the role they currently have, you know, professor, librarian, president, student, or a role they'd like to have. And we, running the simulation, give them a scenario they have to respond to. And the scenario will change over time. Uh, so it, we might start, for example, uh, with putting everybody in November, <clears throat> the night of the election, um, trying to see how they will respond immediately to that. Fast forward to uh, January of the next year of Trump's inauguration, and then beyond that to other times and other events, uh, such as uh, a Republican effort to abolish the Department of Education, for example, uh, and so on. And again, this would be a role-playing exercise. People would participate online, and 
it's a pretty easy thing to get into and it might be very productive to run through. Uh, now, a second thing that I can set up is uh, a session of my online book club. So if you haven't seen this, the, the book club has been going on for more than a decade. Uh, what happens is uh, we pick a book to read that has to do with the future of higher education. So it might be nonfiction, it might be fiction that gives us some you know, illumination in that direction. And then every week uh, we read a slice of it, you know, say 100 pages depending on what it is. Uh, I do a blog post summarizing that and then I add some questions and some reflections and then people respond. Uh, often by comments in the blog post but also on their own website or through social media. Um, it's a lot of fun, uh, it can be very productive, we've had some great discussions in the past. Uh, what I'm proposing that we do is we go through Project 2025. Now this is a Heritage Foundation publication, it's a book, you can get the whole thing online, and it purports to describe, or rather to advocate for what Trump could do when he gets elected. So this is a very conservative publication and the goal is for him to achieve all kinds of goals. Everything from replacing a lot of civil servants who are appointed by Democrats to uh, doing, um, ramping up a trade war with China and so on. They have some explicit call outs to education in the book and also the rest of the book does apply to higher education. For example, the uh, Project 2025 calls for Trump to deport a lot of, of uh, immigrants and some of them live or work or teach or, takes the, or take classes on our campuses. So we could work through that uh, over say a two month period and that will give us a chance to learn more about this potential vision of the Trump administration and to share our thoughts. Uh, third thing I can do is I could do a virtual workshop, so like a Future Transform session, but instead of being a one hour um, slot, instead of doing say two hours, maybe concurrent, maybe separate over time, giving people a chance to dive in, then pause, reflect, and come back with their reflections. Uh, again, we could do that by bringing in experts to uh, be uh, providing content, if you will, uh, and then everyone gets to ask questions and really explore how that could go. That has the advantage of being longer, giving us more time to explore. Uh, the last thing, the fourth thing I can do, which is in many ways the easiest, uh, is I can share information. Uh, I can share stuff that I come across uh, as I look into this problem. So, you know, mentioning the books like Project 2025 or uh, articles uh, describing um, proposals that come up from different potential vice presidential candidates and so on. Uh, I can share them on my blog, I can share them here via the vlog, and of course I can then echo them across social media. I've got a hashtag to use, uh, election 2024, and I'll actually apply that here. So what do you think? Uh, do any of these sound like uh, useful things to do uh, in order to help academia plan for what seems to be a likely new presidency? Please let me know in the comments, and uh, if any of these sound appealing to you, um, I look forward to talking with you about them and getting them going. Thank you.